Hey, hey, like a bat out of hell, Ellen Foley comes roaring back with fighting words. I don't care about the hearts that you used to break. I don't care about the drugs that you used to take. I don't want to hear your stories all about your life for crime. Don't waste my time. So the, so the album is, is due out August 6th, which is getting closer and closer. This is very exciting. How are you feeling it about is. it? I feel great. because I mean, the unknown is, which it always is, but now more than ever, is that people are writing incredible things. People like you, Guy <laughs> Paul Zalo, the American songwriter, wrote this love letter, said it was one of the greatest, he was actually his greatest albums of 2021. But there you don't you know how that translates into sales, you know, when you're when we're kind of a mom and pop shop, you know, right. uh, trying well, to get the even in the best of times, nobody actually paying for music these days, you know, it's yeah. all downloads and streams and stuff. So, yeah, so um, I guess I have to be just hopeful that people hear the music, yep. not even buy it. I just it's great because if getting this kind of press that. Yep. Uh, that people hear it. That's, you know, that's what you, what is hopefully realistic to hope for. Right, right, right. Now, for, for people who, people know you from your Meatloaf song and from Paradise by the Dashboard Lights, and I, I mentioned to you before, uh, for me, the song that I'm most familiar with is We Gotta Get Out of This Place, the Ian Hunter song that you do, and the, the whole Muhammad Ali, Mah Marlena Dietrich. Marlena Dietrich, you <laughs> reminded me of that. I came up with Marlena Dietrich and Muhammad Ali. I don't know, but I guess it was pretty good. Now that you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely, I loved it. And and have you been in touch with Ian? How is he doing? Um, you know, I haven't. You know, peripherally, I sort of have because, uh, well, gosh, it was almost a year and a half ago. I, yeah. I I saw members of his band. You know, guys. You know, in, in that sort of network of you musician friends. Yep. Um, but they're in his band, the Rant Band, yep. and they were on tour, you know, and he's yep. 80. Yep. I know, he's, he's 81 or 82 now, I think, I don't know. Is he? Yeah, because <laughs> he has a birthday two days before me, I'm June 5th, he's a couple of days before, yep. and he always did a concert at the um, at the City Winery, this really great venue, and I sang, oh, great. Gosh, I guess it was six or seven years ago now, because he was 75, yep. yes, yes. Because yeah. you were right in the middle of, I mean, it was uh, Ian Hunter and Mick Ronson and the guys from The Clash and, you know, in the early 80s, it was, it, it was, what was it, what was it like to be part of that group of people, those musicians? Um, well, you say early 80s, but my association with Hunter and Ronson was um, 77, 70, yeah, yeah, yeah. when we did the record. Right. And it, it was a really a great um fun, uh, educational, um, colorful, warm experience being with those guys. And I yeah. think the mu music shows it. It really reflected kind of everything I, I wanted it to. Uh -huh. And the whole flash thing, that was that was a few years later. That was 81, I guess yes. I was around. And I mean. That was this album here, right? True. Yeah. Uh, the Spirit of St. Louis. That's the one. The whole clash thing was me being a fish out of water. I mean, I literally had fallen off the turnip truck, as we would say here, <laughs> in to New York in 1972. Had an incredible decade. Did all this theater, music, you know, Broadway, television, movies, and then all of a sudden I'm. I'm catapulted into a whole other world. And it certainly was a whole other world. It was Thatcher Britain at the time. It was yeah. being around 
these these guys, the whole you know English punk thing. They they all came from you know a similar background. Yep. And they created this whole this whole genre, this whole type of music, you know, out of out of nothing. You know, they just it was kind of made up. So <laughs> it was you know obviously they they were uh, you know sort of at the top of their game when I met them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. It was after after London Calling, which was fantastic. Yep. And, um, you know, going from me being kind of like, you know, burgeoning rock and roll chick, you know, getting a lot of attention, this, that, and the other, into being kind of rock girlfriend a little bit. But uh, but we did make the record. And that, yep. yeah. That 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 took me out of the kitchen, I might say. <laughs> right. But it was a very different experience than I ever had then or I've ever had since. So it's it's really valuable for that. Very cool. So you're out of the kitchen again. You got a new album coming out, Fighting Words. Uh, yes. And I, it's your first in a little bit of a while. And I'm wondering what brought that on. Why you decided at this point in time to make a new record? Well, the last one was. Um, about time, which was eight years ago. Yep. But before that, I guess it was 30 years. So <laughs> right. I guess the question would be what what brought that on? That I bet what brought it on is because I met uh, Paul Faglino, who's the, the composer and lyricist on on both records. Right. And so it was really about him and and getting excited and him saying, Come on, get out of the kitchen or yep. off the couch or wherever I happen to be. Yeah. Uh, and we created this thing together and now we've done it again. Cool. So how did the two of you work together? Is, so is he writing songs with you in mind? Is he kind of, is there any yeah. back and forth? He, or, yep. Yeah, he writes the songs for me. He brings me the songs in a, you know, slightly embryonic, but, but or a little bit more um, version. And we sit there and we talk and we argue and I sing and we find out what works in my voice, lyrically, what doesn't work. There are some songs that we throw out all together. Right. So it's, it's a good, uh, it's a good collaboration that way. But I'm, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't claim to be the songwriter. He's right. the songwriter. I'm the interpreter, the chanteuse, as it were. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and so when were the, the sessions taking place for this record? I assume it the was pre-COVID. Yeah, it was before COVID. The, se the sessions took place, um, I would say, like in about the last four years, actually. Right. You know, like, uh, before COVID. And, but they were still done remotely. Right. Which maybe people are doing that all over. I, I think they are. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That seems to be and the way. So <laughs> it was great. You know, you don't pay for a studio. You don't have a record company to pay for the studio. Yep. Or any of the other perks we used to have. So they, everybody did their parts in their homes, in their studios, sent it to Paul. He, he put it together, you know, brought me the tracks right with his, uh, laptop and his pro tools and a really good mic i mean that's that was the key uh, uh -huh. you know we might have been doing kind of homemade with the pro tools but the mic had to be good and it was cool. so you got really good vocal sound on it it's to me it sounds great yep, yep, and yep. Then, then we went you know and of course had it mixed had it had everything done in the studio and you know went in did overdubs and new vocals in a studio and the the who I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. You probably have it there somewhere. Um, <laughs> did the uh, did the um, the engineering and and mis um, mixed it. Right. So, right, but right. In my living room, which was just great. <laughs> so, it. as a vocalist, what's is, is there a difference in your mindset when you're sitting and singing in your living room as opposed to the studio? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's much. You just you know, much more relaxed. Ah, okay. okay. Um, sometimes if you sing in a studio, it might be a place you've never been in in your life. Right. And you walk in there and you're up there, you're in there all by yourself in this booth, you know, with headphones on, you're 
hermetically sealed. <laughs> and this way, you know, I, I'm sitting on my sofa where I, I, I sat, you know, when we would listen to, to the stuff and, and the sofa I sat on when we would, you know, develop the song. So, I mean, that makes a big difference. Yeah. It really, yeah. I think I might have told you the last time the only the only drawback of recording in my apartment is that you know I live uh, right basically on Broadway on the Upper West Side right. on the second floor. So it, so it was summertime when we were doing it at times, and uh, the window window somewhere in the house would be open, and you'd have a fire truck or somebody blasting music or police sirens. So. Yeah, had to stop for that, but then right, right. Now, we managed what, to get whole performances out of it. Excellent. Speaking of performances, you got a performance with Carla DeVito on the album. I'm just happy to be here is the name of the song. How did that, yeah. ha how did that happen? Who put that together? I'm so glad to be here now. I, I started seeing Carla, uh, I would say five years ago, we did a um, uh, a tribute to Jim Steinman. Yep. And he, you know, he had been sick. He was, he was, you know, not great, but he came right. and he, he was in a wheelchair and a whole bunch of people sang his songs in a place called uh, Hello 54, because it's what, it's the space that used to be Studio 54. And there's a club downstairs and she and I just started talking and, and, you know, I would say we, I feel we, we really sort of clicked. It was nice. Then we both sang on braver than you are the meatloaf uh, trio that we did and just right. stayed in touch. And I just thought it would be a great idea. Uh, so I, I told Paul to write us a song. Cool. Write cool. us a song, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to go. Crack that one. Go your partner. <laughs> and speaking of Jim Steinman, you do have one of his songs kind of closes out the album called uh, Heaven Can Wait, which is kind of a power ballad. So uh, was that the plan all along to close out with one of his as kind of a tribute? I, I had done the, the recording of the song in 2003 right. uh, as, a, as part of a soundtrack for an indie film I was in called Lies I Told My Little Sister. Right. And, and recorded it for the movie. And I thought it was beautiful. It had this lovely orchestration. And, um, and I, I told Paul, yeah, I want it on the record. And I, I on my other records, I think like on oh, Night Out, I put the Ian Hunter song, uh, Don't Let Go. Right. The last album, we had something that I, I thought was really heartfelt. And this song, you know, do you leave a, you leave them, feeling something yeah and I, yeah. it's really powerful yeah. i let and i love to sing it i've sung it i say i sang it first in 1977 you know really in a show yeah <laughs> a show that jim did called um, neverland <laughs> That, that Jim loves so much. And, right. and it's the same thing that's in the Bad Out of Hell musical yeah. that's out now. It's still the Lost Boys. So yeah, I sang it in there. I played Wendy. Um, <laughs> you know, she's kind of the mother goddess figure. Yep. And uh, very, you know, pure. And she wore this, uh, she, I, she, the character, wore this white nightgown. But, and then I don't remember if it was an old rape scene or what. Remember, this was a different time. Yep. But after it, I emerged in on my my white nightgown with a what had a blood stain in the front, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be a gynecologist to figure what 
that's about. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, gotcha. And then said, "Heaven can wait," and it was it was it was quite a moment. And I've sung it all through my career yeah. with my my bands and uh, cabaret acts, and, and, and I've taken it with me everywhere. So I've taken Jim Jim with me everywhere. So you've worked for Jim Steinman for a long over a long period of time. What kind of guy was he? Because he seems kind of like an enigma to the Jim is an enigma, um, but what you do know about him is great because he's hilarious uh -huh. and he's super generous, you know. And, you know, he he gives everybody nicknames. I was funky. Ellen Funky is how he would say, ooh, funky. <laughs> and uh, very generous. Um, you know, I mean, he was a genius, obviously, but, you know, you didn't feel like you were talking to a genius. You just felt yeah, like you were talking to your friend Jim. Uh, he was he was uh, in the studio, very creative. He, he, he would, yeah, I say creative, but he the artist, the singer, didn't have a lot of leeway because Jim always knew exactly what he wanted. Right. I think Jim, I think Jim, Jim came out of the womb knowing exactly, exactly what, what he wanted. <laughs> but he was he was loving, but. You know, but then again, you don't know what his life was like. I mean, he was he was a loner. He always lived alone. People were always the big question like, oh, Jim's relationship. Da -da. But I never knew. I didn't care. You know, yeah. <laughs> figured if he wanted people to know, he would he would have told us a long time ago or we would have. But, you know, he um, I don't like to say he created, you know, his own own mystique but maybe he did maybe you know maybe what we saw was a character in Jim Steinman's imagination what he saw I mean later on I mean I wasn't around him that much when all the touring was happening when there were the leather jackets and the weird right. glasses and all that <laughs> so that 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 became a character I'm sure but yeah, what it was I really knew that well now speaking of funky you've you you've recorded a Wilson Pickett tune I found a love that's on right him. that's I mean, right How'd that happen? <laughs> well, Paul Paul came up with it. I think he might have come up with it not when we were recording, but when we were playing out live uh -huh. because it it's a fabulous live song. So I mean, I did it for a bunch of years live, and it really was. I mean, you can really, you know, do your Wilson Pickett slash James Brown uh, yep. thing. Yep. You know, yep. for a white girl from St. Louis, I I think I might have. <laughs> done a decent job, I would say, if I could get down on my knees, I would be down on my knees doing this song. Yeah, but well, then, yeah, well it, with me, I don't know about you, I, I could get down, somebody would have to help me up. It would be getting up again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go. And in addition to the funky thing, you kind of got a country thing going on with a song called I Call My Pain By Your Name. So right. you're kind of mixing it up pretty well there. Huh? That's right. You know, I love singing that country thing because you really get to, you know, do a real full throated emotional and you get to do the the yep. twangy and the cry in your voice. And yep. and Paul had that song. He had that song before. I think he was in a band called the Five Chinese Brothers. I think that was probably something that they did. Right, 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 right. So uh, with the album coming out fairly soon from now, uh, any live things happening what what's what are you going to be able yeah. to do yeah i'm trying to put something together at a club here a place called the iridium right um, it was famous because les paul played there every monday night oh yeah 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 and, and it's a lovely club we did a couple of gigs there you know i think around 2015 to the last time i played in the states i played over in europe a lot since um I want to do it in September, so let's. I'm hoping that that's going to fall together. Cool. And do you have a band together? Or, or, I have a great band. It's yeah. the band that was on the record. Great. Unless there's an, anybody who can't do it, then you know we we can sort it out. But you know, I think, <laughs> sure I you think everybody. You know, we always had so much fun. You know, do with this band, bunch of let like, people. People were really friends in this band, and and it was good. So I think everybody could do it. I hope. Yeah. And uh, I think you touched on the idea that there may be a music video in the works with you and Carla. Is that going to happen, do you think? Yeah, um, I'm sort of dragging my feet about it. 
I don't know why exactly. I, I, I'm just, it's kind of just kind of daunting to think of how to do it and yada, right. yada, but I might be able to actually hire somebody on this end that would take the pressure off me to, to help produce something like that. But it, cause it would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I think, There's you know, gotta be plenty of people around who wanted to help out. Yeah, I uh, know, I know, I, you know, I would have said, you know, members of my family are all in that business, but I hate to ask them because it, when it, it's me, it's like, right, you know, the, the big <laughs> eye roll, like their eyes are going to get stuck up in their head. Right. So I might have to depend on the kindness of strangers. Oh, well, that's oh well. Oh, <laughs> well. And, and are you doing any acting? Is there any, uh, you know, I, uh, it, I have a show that I did with a, a partner of mine called um, Club Dada, in parentheses, in difficult times. And we developed it for a long time. His name is Robert I. Rubinsky. We, and we finally did two performances at a, at a very famous off-off-Broadway theater here called La Mama. Uh -huh. We did two performances and the dates of the performances were March, six and seventh <laughs> perfect timing <laughs> yeah but yesterday robert i came up to my house in the country we actually did a uh a, like a streaming show that people could uh right right could, could, yeah, but they you know it was la mama's uh, audience uh tune into and we talked about the show and we we had some really great video clips that we had done and from the performances and we sang a couple of live songs so yeah, I mean, I just did something different yesterday. It felt so good. It Excellent. feels so good when you finally, after all this time, yeah. you get yep. to do something creative and perform. Exactly. Well, hopefully, if you hit the road, come down to New Zealand and visit us. We'd love to see the show. I'll just pop down. Please do. It's, it's all downhill. <laughs> yeah. Much easier when you're when you're on your in your wheelchair. Oh, there you know. go. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> I did not say that, ladies and right. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. I'm much appreciated. Thanks, Marty. Great to see everything. you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right, we'll see you. Bye bye. Bye bye.